everybody and welcome back to Nellie Ruth Designs. Um, <clears throat> I'm proceeding right along as you can see this hasn't taken me too long with the little cottage um, slow stitch and applique project I'm working on for Liz's uh, journal our yo-yo journal that's going back and forth. Um, so I invite everyone to join in on this. I want to talk about this Mod Podge fabric, um, water-based sealer glue and finish. Um, I'm going to call it a paste. I don't know what else to call it. Um, and I just, I love it. It's the first time I'm working with it. So if you're interested in finding more, you know, out about this, if you haven't used it before, I'd love to have you um, join in. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot of fun videos out there, different techniques and different projects. Um, in my previous video, I had shown, let me just move this out of the way real quick. I had showed you how I wanted to, I thought I wanted to use these little flowers over this and I made the right decision. I'm glad that I didn't go with this. It's too bright. It's too bold um, for the piece. So what I did in my last video, I took, I purchased this, I took this um, Mod Podge fabric and uh, you can kind of see the shine. Can you see how it's shiny? This is the original material on the back. So you can see how it's, you know, normal fabric. This has a, hear that? This has a paste on it. It's, it's dried and you can really kind of tug it, pull it. Um, I love this and I will be using this a lot more. It helps with fraying when you cut these small little images out. You can see here. Um, how I cut these, they did not fray at all. And they are even the most delicate, intricate work. It's so easy to cut out. So I want to show you um, how easy it is. And I'm just going to refer back to this here. Um, I need to cut some more vines. So let me explain what I've done here. And because I want to get this glued down, it's gonna, I'm gonna have to give it maybe two, three hours to set. And I want to try to finish this page today out on my back porch. Today is my it's Sunday here, um, the day I'm filming this. And Sundays I like to try to just either hang out by my pool, read a book, if the weather is conducive to that. Or I like to sit on my back porch it's if, it, if it's a little cloudier and work on my, my handwork or practice some of my watercolor techniques. Um, so this morning, Formula One racing was on and we all sit down, my husband and I and my son, he's a big F1 fan. So we sit down and watch that. So I always have something to do because it makes the 55 laps go a little bit quicker. So this morning, what I did on my piece here for Liz, I'm just going to set these aside right here, is I went and I hand stitched um, this little piece of lace on here. Um, this came from a old doily that I had that I just cut in half and trimmed around. And I just thought that would be a cute little, there's the back, a cute little accent piece. I have this all glued down. Um, because I'm going to be doing more hand stitching and I want to be able to um, pick it up. And I have it, I glued it down on this wax paper so it didn't stick to my board or my desk mat. And then what I did, so I had set that aside. And then what I did this morning was I took the fabric here and I had stitched, I just did a slow stitch, single stitch up the side here just to hold that in place 
and then um, in my previous video you can see where I had put um, I put glue I used the Mod Podge fabric paste on the back of here and the back of the window to make it a little bit stronger then when I placed this down I just held it I don't work with an embroidery hoop or anything like that I do a lot of my work flat on the board or I will just take a single piece and I hold it in my hand um, a lot of my pieces are too small to put in an emery um, round hoop an embroidery hoop so I, I don't use anything. I just do it all holding it in my hand. So I did a blanket stitch around the door. And this Mod Podge is wonderful because there was no fraying. I didn't have to worry about any loose ends coming out. Um, so I took a chocolate, real dark chocolate brown um, DMC floss. I used two strands and I did a blanket stitch here. And I did the same thing up in the window, and then um, I just stitched across and down to make the window, the window panes. All right, and then I did put some of the Mod Podge, just a little row under here and there. Um, this I will just hold in my hand, and I will stitch this on when the time comes. I don't need to glue this down at all. And then down below where I have my grass and my little meadow um, is where I cut out these little flowers here. And um, I will tack these down with some embroidery uh, floss. And the only way I'm going to tack these down is I will take some embroidery, DMC embroidery floss. I'll do a single strand for these and I'll take the same colors and I'm just going to do um, just sporadic little um, stitches around to to tuck these right now I've added the glue so when I do that and I actually I can pick it up and they won't fall out I didn't want these to fall out so I just took a little dab of glue and glued these in here like that I can't use this it's got a little hook on it I don't want to um, have them come off and that's all I did I left this one open right here so I can stitch over the um, trim on the home on the little cottage and you can see these are just all stuck down and they aren't they're not going anywhere um, I do plan on making some with my um, ribbon embroidery some little rosettes and maybe adding a few pearls here and there to you know accent um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, when I put my little house down, um, this is the sidewalk. And again, I will stitch, I'll probably do maybe um, another blanket stitch around here just to give it some character. I'm not going to leave it like that, you'll see. And then I didn't want to leave this raw edge here. So I found a little tiny piece of crochet. Um, I have these. I have a lot of these pretty little flowers. And then I cut these apart um, and use them. So I took, I wanted a little doormat here, but I didn't want a square doormat. So I took a little piece off of one of these little doilies here. Um, and you can see this is the same doily here that I used for the top. I just cut, I cut it in half, so you can see that. And then I cut these little edges off, and then I just made a little arch. It's kind of like a big, a big stained glass arch in the the roof. So I used one of these as a little doormat, and then I want to. Um, I, want, I thought I'd have a little gate on each side. So this is another piece of doily. I should put some of these in my Etsy shop so people can cut and trim and use little pieces. Um, and if I do that, I, I will make an announcement. But this is an old uh, tablecloth that I bought. I have, it's very, it's a very large tablecloth. And I just started cutting sections off of this and you can cut whatever you want. You know, you can add like a little 
I could add a little tip to the roof here. Um, say this little piece here. You just have to have a good imagination. So if I wanted to do something like that, I would just cut this out like this. You know, I could add a little, like a little crest to the top of the roof there to give it a little more interest. You know, something like that. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just saying a lot of these little pieces, I could even add this as a little flower um, tucked in and around, which might be really cute because these do look like little little flowers. So that's an idea. But I wanted to have a little gate. I want to cover this part of the cottage up. I don't want a raw edge there. So I just took little clippings from that and I thought that would make a really cute little gate. And then I'm going to show you how easy these are to cut because I want to get these tacked down so I can sit tonight and work on these. So my idea here is to have a vine growing up and around. You often see that um, in many homes, uh, cottages um, over in Europe. And to cover up this edge here, I'm just going to be placing that there and then I'm going to start over here with this little vine and I don't know which whoops I don't know which way I think I might start with it like this and maybe just go over that um, corner of the fence post a little bit. I have glue on these and everything keeps put it like that. Okay. This has been such a fun, fun project. I'm just so excited about it. And I just, I love making things for other people. I mean, I like um, working in my journal, but knowing that I'm making this for Liz just makes it that much more special. It's almost like, you know, just creating a, a special gift for someone um, that she can just um, really enjoy. You know, I don't know if she does any stitching or sewing, and I think that's what makes why I'm so excited about creating this for her, because I don't think she does anything like this, and I want her to be able to enjoy um, a page like this. So um, I'm going to continue. We're going to do a vine up the side here, and I'm going to have it kind of go up around the roof. I have English ivy on my house right now and I'm actually tearing it down because it's about 15 years old and it's just taking over everything and it keeps getting up. I live in a, a Tudor style home and we should have had, had it stoned all the way up, but we did the stucco on the second story and I have to get a ladder out every year. I'm getting too old to get up on a ladder and fight with the ivy and pull it down Um so this is a year where I'm just trying to get rid of as much maintenance outside of my home as I can. Um, I have a large property and it's, it's just getting, it's getting too much. Um, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you how easy, once you have this Mod Podge on here, how easy it is to cut. So I want to um, cut, I want to cut this vine, viney thing out right here. And it's, it's literally just like paper. And it is so cool. See how easy it is to cut and it doesn't fray. 
I am just loving this. And it has kind of a plasticky feel to it. I guess that's how it doesn't really feel like cuts like paper, but it has a it it turns into almost like a plastic. Um, and I just love it. So if I have any other intricate little detailed um, pieces, I'm going to lather them all up with this magic glue, magic paste. Magic Mod Podge. And then I can sit at night and cut. But you see how easy, and your, your material doesn't fray. I had to go into Michael's and get some puzzle glue, which I got to do that too today. We've had a ginormous puzzle sitting on our dining room table at one end of it. And um, it's been there for, I'm not even going to tell you how long it's been there. It's shameful. Um, it's been there since last July. So it's been there for uh, a year. <laughs> Oh my God. It's, I think it's time for me to get it off of my dining room table. Um, and I went in for some Mod Podge puzzle glue. And I said, well, let's see what else is here. Because I was looking for some decoupage items. And I saw this here for the um, fabric. And I said, you know what, before I buy it, I would, you know, because it was, it was kind of expensive. I said, I'm going to Google and see how it actually works. And I watched a little video, YouTube video in Michael's and the girl was showing and oh my God, I says, yep, that's for me. I got to get this. So if you didn't know about it, but I'm sure anyone that works with fabric, you do. I would highly recommend this because look at how easy this is to cut. Your fabric and you can get right in there. I wouldn't try this with my exacto. I'm dying to try it with my exacto knife, but I think I would rip. So see that? And it has the Oh, it's just wonderful. I just can't say enough of it about it. All right, so here is a vine, and I'm going to have this go up the side of the house, and just like my vines, they get in underneath the eaves. That's another reason why I got to get it out, because it's I don't want I don't want to have to have any major repairs. So we're going to put that there, and then I'm going to cut, I want to find another one like this, and I want to put that up the top here. And it looks like it's that one there. So we're going to cut that one out. And then I will tack these down. Let them dry, and then uh, this evening... I'll be able to sit, or later this afternoon, I'll be able to sit on the porch and get these tacked down. And I'm just so excited. I don't know about you, but when I get on a project that is really um, moving along and my creative 
juices are flowing. I don't like to stop. I like to just go and get it done. I have two pages left that I have to get ready for Liz. We chatted this morning. She has two pages left, but she's taking her time. I'm taking her time. We decided when we started this yo-yo journal, um, the journal that she's working in, and then, you know, I make, I'm working in her. She's working in mine. Then we're going to mail them. We have no time constraints. Um, we want to just really take our time, enjoy the process. There's no deadline, which I think makes it much nicer. Um, I don't like to work in a deadline, under a deadline. I did that for years when I worked for my husband's company. But art should just be relaxing and fun. And that's what we're both making it. All right, so we have that one there. And then I'm going to take this little one. And I'm wondering, I really want to I want to cover that little, I want to cover this little end here because there's just the way I stitched it. I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to have it, I'm going to have it go just like that. I will have it go just like that. So we have the vine running up the side. We have our two uh, fence posts here, our little mat. And I think I can um, glue these little pieces down. So I have it underneath, obviously, my, have it on here on some uh, wax paper. And you don't need, and again, the only reason I'm doing this is I just don't want when I'm, this will be sitting on my lap and I'll be lifting little pieces. I don't want everything else to fall off and I don't I want to remember where I have it all. So, um, and I don't have to put a lot on. I just have to put a dab. This is from my seam binding there. Yeah, I want that right there, like that. I'm going to put a little bit on here just to hold this. So you don't need a lot. And then that way, like I said, I can just pick it up after and stitch it. This I'm just going to move to the side a little bit. This helps my memory too as to where I have everything. I might turn this this way. Put that so it's kind of rounded on the top there. And then we're going to bring this back over. And I'm just going to put again a little dab there. going to raise the roof and what I'm going to do here because I like this position I'm just going to flip this up put a little bit here and I'm going to put a little bit up here like 
that. And then I want to put this back down here just so I can see on or about. And then I will put this right here. Just to kind of position that. I want this to come down a little bit. Move over. Let that come down like that. There. And then I'll hand stitch that on. And I think that is it, right? Oh, yeah, we got that. All right. Perfect. So I will end up, I'll let all of this dry and I'll go about my day and do what I have to do here. And it'll have ample time. And these brushes are very easy to clean. You just run them under hot water and they all come clean. Um, so yeah, so when I work, I have this flipped over on my lap like this. And then I just work I work just like this and you know sometimes I I just lift up and I work along sometimes I'll hold it down and you know get my my threads going I prefer to do it that way um, I just feel like I have a little bit more control so there is the little cottage I can zoom in a little bit more on that I'll bring it down okay so that's what we have so far um, and I'm really anxious now to, um, sit tonight. Oh, you can't forget my little, this is the chimney. We will put that in. I have to stitch that on beforehand. Um, there we go. So there's the little chimney. And yeah, I think it'll, I think it's going to be really, really cute. Um, I may do some single stitches back behind here. I want to do something to dress this up a little bit. Um, I don't think I want to add, just fold this over. Um, I don't think I want to add any lace or anything like that to take away. Um, I'm glad I did the brown here to take away from uh, the edge or the side um, I do have a lot of different lace I, and I oh I also have my this isn't the one that I'm using or maybe it is one I do have this is going to be a little cloud up in the corner so we have that um, and I will just hand stitch that I don't need to glue that down so we have our little cloud here um, yeah and then I think she'll it'll it'll be all set um, I don't know maybe I'll just make a maybe I'll just do some white or cream colored French knots up each side just to give it a little character but I think I think that will be really pretty and then I'll do the I'll do some ribbon roses in amongst here and maybe add a few little pearls but I think that that'll be good so the next time you see this and I create a video um, it will most likely be done I will go over again all the new little additions that I did and then we will go and get it in the book and um, that will be then I'll only have one page left and I'll be able to send it on its merry way over to Scotland so I want to thank everybody for joining in this is such a fun project and if you don't know how um, I created the book I do have a video on the let me raise this up again on the two books that I made um, this is Liz's and I have other videos of different pieces that I have put in her book. You could go back and take a look there in the, the Yo-Yo Journal playlist. 
And um, yeah, I think it's all coming along nicely and it's just a really fun, fun project. So I hope I've inspired you today to try something new, to use a new product. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun, everyone. So thank you again for joining in and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.